lovelies. It is time for another book outlet haul. So stay tuned. So I have three more book outlet boxes here to unbox for you. I've got one relatively small one and kind of a big one and like a medium one. Though this one I'm a little concerned about because it's busted in the top and has been taped up all over so yeah it looks like this right now like so hopefully everything in it is fine uh, but we are going to start with this smaller box right here and i don't i don't really like these newer boxes they open really weird You have to like tear here and then tear along here and here. And then this one actually has, this one has a another layer inside of it. And I've also found that they stopped putting paper in the boxes. So the books end up getting a little damaged because they're, they're not packed in there better. So, I think I've gotten at least one, sometimes more, books um, damaged in these boxes. I rarely ever get it, got any damaged books before when they had the paper in them. Uh, but yeah, this one is bent here. First book in this box. Let me move these and then I'll show you the books and I can stack the books here. Hold on. Sorry if the angle changed, but Einstein knocked into my tripod. Okay, so if you watched my last book outlet haul, you know that the very first box that I opened up, one of the books that I had ordered wasn't in there and instead they, they accidentally sent me this ready to read level one, little teeny tiny, I don't know, kids book. And uh, so in here I have the book that was supposed to be sent to me there. Uh, plus an extra book I guess they sent as a bonus. Uh, but the book that I had ordered was Beth and Amy by Virginia Cantra. And this is a contemporary retelling of Little Women. So this is the second book in the March Sisters series. The first book which I got in last haul was Meg and Joe. And that one says, the timeless classic Little Women inspired this heartwarming modern tale of four sisters from New York Times bestselling author Virginia Cantro. The March sisters, reliable Meg, independent Joe, stylish Amy, and shy Beth have grown up to pursue their separate dreams. When Joe followed her ambitions to New York City, she never thought her career in journalism would come crashing down, leaving her struggling to stay afloat in a gig, of a gig economy as a prep cook and secret food blogger. Meg appears to have the life she's always planned. The handsome husband, the adorable toddlers, the house in a charming subdivision. Einstein's making all kinds of noise. But sometimes getting everything you've ever wanted isn't all it's cracked up to be. When their mother's illness forces the sisters home to North Carolina for the holidays, they'll discover what really matters. One thing's for sure, they'll need the strength of family and the power of sisterhood to remake their lives and reimagine their dreams. And, uh, yeah, I'm a little bummed that these books keep coming damaged because of the, their new packaging. Okay, the bonus book I guess they sent me is Further Under the Duvet by Marion Keys. And it also looks like it had a sticker, but they took the sticker off and then it got dirty where the sticker was. Oops, I dropped my box. Uh... This one looks like so, and you can see where the sticker was up here. Let's see. This says, slide fun further under the duvet, get yourself comfortable, and let Marion take you places you've never been before. Hold on, let me make sure that this is not like a sequel to something. Okay, it doesn't seem to be. Okay, uh, it says, places like the Irish Air Guitar Championships, a shopping trip to Bloomingdale's, 
with a difference and canes with a chronic case of velatitis. Along the way, you'll encounter knicker politics, fake tans, sticky out ears, and passionate love affairs, both with makeup and with Toblerones. And of course, Agony Aunt Mammy Walsh is on hand to solve all your problems. Hilarious and poignant, Marion's long-awaited second volume of journalism and previously unpublished writing, including several short stories, is The Modern Woman's Perfect Companion. So put the kettle on and grab that Kit Kat Chunky. Everything else will wait. Wait. Praise for under the duvet. So this is further under the duvet. Okay. It, I mean, it looks like it's just short stories and stuff, so I guess you don't have to have read. Is this nonfiction? Okay, it seems like this is a nonfiction, uh, humor, comedy, autobiography kind of book. Okay. So weird that they sent that. Okay, now I'm going to open up the one that's all busted. Okay, so it looks like everything had to be fully taped up because this box apparently was just falling apart all over. So it's currently open like this. Okay. Hopefully everything is in here. I'll have to do a check after we go through everything in here. So the first thing I see is something I'm so excited for. It is Jagged Little Pill, You Live, You Learn, Memories, the stories behind the iconic album and groundbreaking musical by Alanis Morissette and Diablo Cody and the complete cast and crew. It's damaged! It's messed up on the bottom here and busted. This is not one I was okay with being a little damaged. Ugh. But yes, this... Uh, Alanis Morissette is like somebody that was very big for me uh, as a teenager. I, I did actually go and see this concert, Jagged Little Pill. Uh, me and my friend Brandy. This was like... It was our anthem. And uh, let's see, this says... The official behind-the-scenes look at the powerful musical based on Alanis Morissette's cult classic album, Jagged Little Pill. 25 years after its release, the Grammy Award-winning album, Jagged Little Pill, has come to define a generation. Now in an adaptation as a Broadway musical, Morissette's iconic numbers, including smash hits like Ironic, You Ought to Know, and Hand in My Pocket, animate a powerful original story by Academy Award-winning writer Diablo Cody, Juno. This book provides the ultimate behind the scenes keepsake for anyone who has been touched by the show or more set songs. It features stunning photography by Matthew Murphy, original in-depth interviews with the cast, crew, Morissette and Cody, an introduction from Morissette, the full libra libretto with Morissette's notes on her lyrics, and essays that illuminate the albums and shows meanings and cultural context. And I'm so excited to have this, but I'm so sad it's messed up. So sad. Oh, but yeah, it looks like this. Yeah, the books are there's they don't do the paper packing inside, so everything's just loose and it just gets so damaged. Okay, next is the Left Handed Booksellers of London by Garth Nix. This says. In a slightly alternate London in 1983, Susan Arkshaw is looking for her father, a man she has never met. Crime boss Frank Thringley might be able to help her, but Susan doesn't get time to ask Frank any questions before he is turned to dust by the prick of a silver hat pin in the hands of the outrageously attractive Merlin. Merlin is a young left-handed bookseller, one of the fighting ones. With the right-handed booksellers, the intellectual ones, he belongs to an extended family of magical beings who police the mythic and legendary old world when it intrudes on the modern world, in addition to running several bookshops. Susan's search for her father begins with her mother's possibly misremembered or misspelled surnames, a reading room ticket, and a silver cigarette case engraved with something that might be a coat of arms. 
Merlin has a quest of his own to find the old world entity who used ordinary criminals to kill his mother. As he and his sister Vivian tread the path, treading the path of a botched or covered up police investigation from years past, they find that this quest strangely overlaps with Susan's. Who or what was her father? Susan, Merlin, and Vivian must find out as the old world erupts dangerously into the new. In this pulse-pounding and laugh-out-loud expedition to the world of magical booksellers, Garth Nix crafts a unique fantasy that blurs the boundaries between reality and mythic legend. I love me a bookish book, and this just sounds like so much fun. Okay, next up is The Making of Us by Lisa Jewell. And this says, Lydia, Dean, and Robbie, Robin don't know each other yet. Each is facing difficult challenges. Lydia is still wearing the scars from her traumatic childhood. Wealthy and successful, she leads a lonely and disjointed existence. Dean is a young, unemployed, single dad whose life is going nowhere. Robin is 18. Gorgeous, popular, and intelligent, she entered her first year of college, confident in her dream of becoming a pediatrician. Now she's failing her classes. Now she's falling in love for the first time. Lydia, Dean, and Robin live in very different lot live very different lives, but each of them independently has always felt that something was missing. What they don't know is that a letter is about to arrive that will turn their lives upside down. It's a letter containing a secret, one that will bind them together and show them what love and family and friendship really mean. Delightly, delightfully funny and brilliantly poignant, The Making of Us is a gem that will remind readers of the miracles that happen when we bring life into the world and share our lives with those we love. This does, definitely doesn't seem like a, a typical Lisa Jewell book, which I think most of her books tend to be like thrillers. And this is like filled with heart and humor and compelling and heartbreaking. So I'm, I'm curious. Okay, next up is The Lost Fairy Tales, Pages and Co. Uh, by Anna James, or Pages and Co. The Lost Fairy Tales by Anna James. This is book two in the Pages and Co. series. And book one is Tilly and the Book Wonders. And I do have that one. It's on my shelves, but I pulled it up on Goodreads. This says, A magical adventure to delight the imagination. A curl up on the sofa debut from a... Einstein's got a toy. <laughs> Hi, Einstein. Uh, a uniquely talented author. 11-year-old Tilly has lived above her grandparents' bookshop ever since her mother disappeared shortly after she was born. Like the rest of her family, Tilly loves nothing more than to escape into the pages of her favorite stories. One day, Tilly realizes that classic children's characters are appearing in the shop through the magic of book wandering, crossing over from the pages into real life. With the help of Anne of Green Gables and Alice in Wonderland, Tilly is determined to solve the mystery of what happened to her mother all those years ago. So she bravely steps into the unknown, unsure of what adventure lies ahead and what dangers she may face. And again, love me a bookish book. And this series sounds like something really, really cute. And I've heard, uh, I think like Ray from J.D. Ray Reads, or Jade from J.D. Ray Reads, and like Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin. Uh, I, I do remember them talking about this series and really liking it, so yay. Okay, next up I have Very Sincerely Yours by Carrie Winfrey. And this says, a charming and heartwarming new romantic comedy by the acclaimed author of Waiting for Tom Hanks, Carrie Winfrey. Teddy Phillips never thought she would still be spending every day surrounded by toys at almost 30 years old, but working at a vintage toy store is pretty much all she has going on in her life after being unceremoniously dumped by her longtime boyfriend. The one joy that she has kept is her not-so-guilty pleasure, Everett's Place, a local children's show hosted by Everett St. James, a man who Teddy finds very soothing and okay cute. Teddy finds the courage to write him, feeling slightly like one of the children who write to him on his show. He always gives sound advice and seems like he has everything figured out. And he pretty much does. Everett has a great support system, wonderful friends, and his dream job. But there is still that persistent feeling in the back of his mind that something is missing. When a woman named Theodora starts writing to Everett, he is drawn to her honesty, honesty and vulnerability. They continue writing to each other, all the while living their lives without meeting. 
When their worlds collide, however, they must both let go of their fears and figure out what they truly want and if the future they want includes each other. Okay, next I have Watch Over Me by Nina LaCour. And this is way smaller than I thought it would be. This I picked up because of Kayla from Books and Lala. She loved this book, so I wanted to give it a shot. This says, Myla is used to being alone. Maybe that's why she said yes. Yes to a second chance in this remote place, among the flowers and the fog and the crash of waves far below. But she hadn't known about the ghosts. Newly graduated from high school, Myla has aged out of her foster care system. So when she's offered a teaching job and a place to live on an isolated part of the Northern California coast, she immediately accepts. Maybe she will finally find a new home, a real home. The farm is a refuge, but, it also but it's also haunted by the past. And Myla's own memories are starting to rise to the surface. Nina LaCour, the Prince Award-winning author of Are We Okay, delivers another emotional knockout with Watch Over Me, a modern ghost story about trauma and survival, chosen family, and rebirth. Then we have NaNoWriMo Presents Brave the Page, a young writer's guide to telling epic stories by Rebecca Stern and Grant Faulkner. Introduction by Jason Reynolds. And this says, do you have a story to tell? An idea for a book? Just want to write? If you answered yes to any of the above, NaNoWriMo is here to help. Learn to develop, craft, and hone your story from start to finish with this official Young Writer's Guide. Equipped with tips, tools, and best practices, you'll embark on an ambitious journey towards achieving your writing goals with NaNoWriMo's signature goal plus deadline approach. Try new plotting tactics, shape your ideas with brainstorming exercises, and choose a writing style that works for you. Everyone's story deserves to be told, and the world needs yours. So get ready, get set, and brave the page. And uh, it says, featuring motivational pep talks from John Green, Marissa Meyer, Jennifer Nevin, Daniel Jose Older, Daniel Page, Celia C. Perez, and Scott Westerfield. And I am very interested in writing something. I have, I have stories in my head and I just, I, I find it hard to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up I have Rise of the Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. And this is the second book in the Jumbies series and I've pulled it up on Goodreads here. Uh, this says, a spine-tingling tale rooted in Caribbean folklore that will have readers holding their breath as they fly through its pages. Corinne Lemire isn't afraid of anything. Not scorpions, not the boys who tease her, and certainly not jumpies. They're just tricksters parents make up to frighten their children. Then one night, Corinne chases an agouti all the way to the forbidden forest. Those shining yellow eyes that followed her to the edge of the trees, they couldn't belong to a jumbie, or could they? When Corinne spots a beautiful stranger speaking to the town witch at the market the next day, she knows something unexpected is about to happen. And when this same beauty called Severin turns up at Corinne's house cooking dinner for Corinne's father, Corinne is sure that danger is in the air. She soon finds out that bewitching her father, Pierre, is only the first step in Severin's plan to claim the entire island for the Jumbies. Corinne must call on her courage and her friends to learn to use ancient magic she didn't know she possessed to stop Severin and save her island home. With its able and gusty heroine, lyrical narration, and inventive twist on the classic Haitian folktale, The Magic Orange Tree, the Jumbies will be a favorite of fans of breadcrumbs, a tale dark and grim, and where the mountain meets the moon. Okay, then the last book in this box is The Royal Secret by Lucinda Riley. And this says, every family has skeletons in their closet and the British royal family may be about to add a few more. When Sir James Harrison, one of the greatest actors of his generation, passes away at the age of 95, he leaves behind not just a heartbroken family, but also a secret so shocking it could rock the English establishment to its core. Joanna Haslam, an up and coming reporter, is assigned to cover the legendary actor's funeral attended by glitzy celebrities of every background. But Joanna stumbles onto something dark beneath the glamour. 
the mention of a letter Sir James has left behind, the contents of which many have been desperate to keep concealed for more than 70 years. As she peels back the veil of lies that has shrouded the secret, she realizes she's close to uncovering something deadly serious, and the British monarchy may be implicated. Before long, someone is on her tracks, attempting to prevent her from discovering the truth, and they'll stop at nothing to reach the letter before she does. Full of salacious scandal, shocking twists, and captivating romance, the royal secret is a full-throttle escapist adventure. Okay, now I'm going to go and look at uh, my order online just to make sure that everything that was supposed to be in this box was in this box. Okay, everything was there, so yay, that's good. Uh, and when I picked up this box, it looks like this, the bottom has come out of this one. So I'm just going to open it this way. It's also a lot easier to open it this way. Okay, the first book in this box is Over the Woodward Wall by A. Deborah Baker. Uh, I recently read this. It's by, uh, it's by Sean and McGuire. Uh, this is, it's a middle grade story, middle grade fairy tale. Uh, but it's, this book is a book that she mentions in her book, Middle Game. Uh, she created this book to be a book inside of that book. Uh, and this is the first book in the Up and Under series. And it follows Zeb, or Zib, Zib, and Avery. They're two very different children. Zib is very free and wild, whereas Avery is very structured and disciplined and likes the rules and has a set way of doing things. And one day, their courses both get altered on their way to school and they find themselves at this wall, this really, really old stone wall that shouldn't be there, that seems like it's been there forever, but has definitely not. Uh, and they go over it and they find themselves in the up and under, which is this very strange, uh, fantastical kind of land. And they're trying to figure out how to get back home. This says, Avery is an exceptional child. Everything he does is precise, from the way he washes his face in the morning to the way he completes his homework, without complaint, without fuss, without prompt. Zib is also an exceptional child, because all children are in their own ways. But where everything Avery does and is can be measured, nothing Zib does can possibly pre be predicted, except for the fact that she can always be relied upon to be unpredictable. They live on the same street. They live in different worlds. On an unplanned detour from home to school one morning, Avery and Zib find themselves climbing over a stone wall into the up and under an impossible land filled with mystery, adventure, and the strangest creatures, and they must find themselves and each other if they are able to find the way back out and back to their own lives. And I dropped the book on Einstein. <laughs> Uh, but I've read the first book and now I've also read the second book and I, I just really, really love it. And I, when I saw it come up on Book Outlet, I had to get it. Okay, in this box, I also got The Jumbie God's Revenge by Tracy Baptiste, which is book three in the Jumbie series, which I've already told you about. So I got that. Then I have, uh, this is kind of a book for both me and for Marty. And it is How to Make Your Money Last, The Indispensable Retirement Guide by Jane Bryant Quinn. Because who doesn't want to be able to retire eventually and still have money? And this says, the challenge for everyone at midlife and later is finding ways to stretch, of stretching your savings over a retirement that could last for 30 years or more. And uh, yeah, but that's, that's this. I don't think you need to hear too much about that. And then we have Recommended for You by Laura Silverman. And as I said, I love bookish books, so I just knew this was going to be one for me. This says, Shoshana Greenberg loves working at Once Upon, her favorite local bookstore. And with her mom's fighting at home and her beloved car teetering on the brink of death, the store has become a welcome escape. 
When her boss announces a holiday bonus to the person who sells the most books, Shoshana sees an opportunity to at least fix her car if none of her other pro if none of her other problems. The only person standing in her way, new hire Jake Kaplan. Jake is, a, is an affront to everything Shoshana stands for. He doesn't even read, but somehow his sales start to rival hers. Jake may be cute, really cute, and he may be an eligible Jewish single, hard to find South Atlanta, but he's also the enemy, and Shoshana is ready to take him down. But as the competition intensifies, Jake and Shoshana grow closer and realize they might be more on the same page than either expects. That sounds so cute. Okay, next up we have Yes, No, Maybe So. And this one is surprisingly dirty. Like, there's smudges all over it. Uh, but this is by Becky Albertalli and Aisha Saeed. And it has like a 13 plus sticker on it, so interesting. This says, Meet Jamie. Jamie is happy to campaign for local politics so long as he's behind the scenes. There's no way he'd ever knock on doors to ask strangers for their votes. Until he meets Maya. Meet Maya. Maya's having the worst Ramadan ever. Her best friend is too busy to hang out and now her parents are separating. To top it off, her mom thinks the solution to her problems is political canvassing with some guy she hardly knows. Going door to door isn't exactly how they imagine spending their summers, but as the polls grow closer, so do Jamie and Maya. Mastering local activism is one thing. Navigating a cross-cultural romance is a whole lot more complicated. Okay, next up we have The Kingdom by Jess Rothenberg. And this says, let's look at what we know. Did Anna kill Owen Chen? Yes, she did. The point of this case, ladies and gentlemen, is why. Welcome to the Kingdom, a dazzling fantasy theme park where happily ever after is not just a promise, but a rule. Seven beautiful fantasists, half human, half android princesses, are programmed to make wishes come true, no matter what. But when fantasist Anna meets theme park owner Owen, her fairy tale ends in blood. Now she's on trial for experiencing human emotions beyond her programming and must come face to face with what she is and what she's done. But the truth is dangerous, and no one wants the kingdom to fall. That sounds so good. Okay, the next two books I have in here are This Cruel Design and This Vicious Cure by Emily Servada. And these are books two and three in the This Mortal Coil series. So I've pulled up the first book on Goodreads, which I do own. Uh, it says, when a lone soldier, Cole, arrives with news of Lachlan Agata's death, all hope seems lost for Katarina. Her father was the world's leading geneticist and humanity's best hope for beating a devastating virus. Then, hidden beneath Cole's gene-hacked enhancements, she finds a message of hope. Lachlan's created a vaccine. Only she can find it and decrypt it if she can unravel the clues he left for her. The closer she gets, the more she finds herself at risk from Cartaxis, a shadowy organization with a stranglehold on the world's genetic tech. But it's too late to turn back. There are three billion lives at stake, two people who can save them, and one final secret that Kat must unlock. A secret that will change everything. Okay, this next book also has a 13 plus sticker on it, which is interesting. It is Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Steve Otter. This says, The Dreamers Walk Among Us. Is anyone safe? Ronan Lynch is a dreamer. He can pull both curiosities and catastrophes out of his dreams. Jordan Hennessy is a thief. The closer she comes to the dream object she is after, the more inextricably she comes, becomes tied to it. Carmen Farouk Lane is a hunter. Her brother was a dreamer and a killer. She has seen what dreaming can do to a person and the damage that their dreams can do, but those are nothing compared to the destruction that is about to be unleashed. Then I have Accidentally Engaged by Farah Heron. This says, all's, le all's, 
This says, all's fair in love and baking. When it comes to bread, Rena Manji knows exactly what she's doing. She treats her sourdough starters like somewhat unruly children. But when it comes to Rena's actual family and their constant meddling in her life, well, that recipe always ends in disaster. Now Rena's parents have found her yet another potential good Muslim husband. This one has the body of Captain America, a delicious British accent, and lives right across the hall. He's the perfect mouth-watering temptation and completely ruined by the unwelcome side dish of parental interference. Rena refuses to marry anyone who works for her father. She won't be attracted to Nadim's sweet charm or gorgeous lopsided smile. That is, until the baking opportunity of a lifetime presents itself. A couple's cooking competition with the prize of her dreams. Rena will do anything to win, even asking Nadim to pretend they're engaged. But when it comes to love, baking your bread doesn't always mean you get to eat it, too. That sounds so cute. And then the last book in this box is The Mall by Megan McCafferty. And let's see. It's got like a cassette on the front. It's like embossed in it. This says, New York Times bestselling author Megan McCafferty returns to her roots with this coming-of-age story set entirely in a New Jersey mall. The year is 1991. Scrunchies, mixtapes, and 90210 are like totally fresh. I'm very excited for this book already because I, I, I love, I love it. I just love that already because... 1990 to 1999 that was my I turned 10 in 1990 so 1990 so I was 10 like well first half of that year I was nine so that was nine to 19 for me so like my teenage years yeah so it says let me continue with this Cassie Worthy is psyched to spend her summer the summer after graduation working at the Parkway Center Mall in six weeks, she and her boyfriend will head off to college in New York City to fulfill the plan, higher education and happily ever after. But you know what they say about best laid plans. Set in a classic monument to consumer consumerism, this nostalgia stirring novel follows Cassie as she finds friendship, love and ultimately herself in the most unexpected of places. Megan McCafferty, beloved New York Times bestselling author of the Jessica Darling series, takes readers on an epic trip back in time to the mall. And I'm just uh, so excited for this. Okay, so those are all 22 books here. I'll move it like this so you can see it. All 22 books that I got in this haul. Have you read any of them? Did you like them? Did you not? Comment down below and let me know. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. And until next time, remember to always be completely you.